can't get over it. <laughs> I want to bathe in it if that's possible. I don't know. Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for this video. I'm pretty sure I say that in every single video but I'm very excited about this one because I'm going to be sharing with you all how to achieve the perfect face, base, makeup, pretty much everything from the foundation, primer, concealer, highlight, contour, and blush. So that is what I'm going to be sharing with you all today. And to make it even better, all these products are affordable or from the drugstore. So I got you. I'm really excited to kind of sit down with you all and share with you all how to achieve a very flawless base without having to spend an arm and a leg to get that. I love my drugstore. Like drugstore is where my heart is. So I'm really excited to share this with you all. I hope that some of these tips and tricks will be very helpful. Um, hopefully some things that maybe you've not learned before. If you can't tell, I have some visitors <laughs> this week. They're once again uninvited and not paying rent. They really need to go. Like what is this? Who gets that on their neck? Like what? What is happening? Who am I? Am I 16 again? That's what I feel like. Anyways, so I felt like this would be a good time for me to film this video because I do have quite a bit to cover up. So I'm going to be showing you like the fullest coverage makeup that is going to stay in place all day. We're going to take this face from a zero to season 10 full beat. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, we're going to take this face and just transform it completely and see what we can do and it's really funny because I'm gonna be doing like this long wear full coverage foundation routine for you all and it is 9 p.m. um so pretty much what I'm gonna do is film this I'm gonna film another video afterwards and then I'm gonna go to bed so pretty much filming this to take it off but that's okay it's all for the YouTube and it's all for you guys so enough with the rambling I hope you all find this video super super helpful if you do please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave, please. I would really appreciate it. And let's go ahead and jump on in to this video. I have you all zoomed in to where you can hopefully see everything. You're welcome. I'm just kidding. It's probably terrifying. <laughs> I clip this nonsense back. Okay, before we get started, let me just say, if you want flawless foundation, you're gonna have to take care of your skin. I said it, like that's like the big secret. <laughs> and I know so many people, they don't, they don't take care of their skin. And I was one of them, like girl, I rarely ever like washed my face like I should, like ever. Only when I pretty much felt like it and when I was in the shower. And you wouldn't believe me probably right now, but I do have a very thorough, skincare regimen routine whatever you want to call it and you probably don't believe me because i have like 50 visitors on my face and neck right now i don't know what's happening to me i'm not okay with it but take care of your skin i promise you if your skin looks good your makeup will look good the better your skin looks like the better your foundation is gonna look and i mean that just coming from experience because my skin used to be terrible and all of my makeup used to look awful. It did not matter what I used, what primer, what foundation, everything looked awful because I did not take care of my skin. So please take care of your skin. I promise you it will thank you so, so much. So please don't mind my nails, okay? Also, another thing that helps your skin is drinking lots of water. I drink probably a gallon a day. So that really helps too. Okay, obviously I have my brows on and always before you apply foundation, you know, if you're applying your like a full, full coverage, like base for the day, you really want to be sure that your skin is prepped for that. So be sure to wash your face and moisturize in order to prep your skin. Now, after I moisturize, I like to at least allow probably at least 30 minutes before I start applying makeup. Now, if you can't wait, like that's probably fine, but just allowing time for those products to kind of sink in and do what they're supposed to do, I feel like that really helps the, like the longevity of your foundation and all the products that you put on top of your 
moisturizer. So, so I already did that. I'm all good on that. When it comes to exfoliating, because a lot of the times, you know, we'll get acne and blemishes and whatnot, and we'll have like some dry patches, especially with the winter months rolling in. I tend to get a lot more dry patches like around my chin and around my nose. So I really like to exfoliate. I usually um, use chemical exfoliants rather than like physical exfoliants because those can be very, very harsh on your skin. I'm talking about the ones that have like the gritty stuff in it. Like that can actually like tear your skin. Like it's just not good for your skin. So um, I do like to exfoliate quite often, but I will say do not exfoliate the day of applying your makeup. Whenever I know that I'm going to be, you know, wearing a full face, a full glam, full coverage foundation that I want to stay all day and look just flawless, I will always exfoliate the night before. Now, I've tried to exfoliate the day of, like that morning before I apply my products. And I've actually found that when I do exfoliate the day of, like that morning, like before, like right before I apply makeup, I find that product does not sit on my nose. I find that my skin is too stripped of everything which does not make my products stay on my face my skin is very oily but i do get dry patches so i like to exfoliate them away but when i exfoliate everything including you know my nose i find that products do not want to stay on them because it's just stripped of everything so they kind of like just slide off 100 percent honest they slide off so if you can be sure to exfoliate the night before your, you know, full face of makeup. I feel like that really, really helps. Now that we're done with all kind of the prep stuff, we're going to go into the actual face, okay? I got my hair done. I like it. It's a little darker and my roots are touched up and, um, and then I got like kind of my balayage touched up a bit, so. So first step for priming, I just go in with a like a primer water. Normally I go in with the Smashbox, but for a drugstore affordable option, this is the Makeup Revolution Pro Base um, Aqua Priming Base. I think it's kind of like a, I don't wanna say a dupe because I don't think it's exactly the same, but it does kind of have the same quality. So I'll go in and I feel like even though I have oily skin, I like to have something like this because the hydration that this provides can kind of help any of those dry patches that may still be on my skin from like healing blemishes and kind of, you know, moisturize those to where they're not going to be as dry and gross. You know what I mean, right? Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to spray this. This stuff does have like a very good scent to it too. It smells like very clean. I love Makeup Revolution. Most of the things I've tried from them are amazing. Okay. When it comes to primers, you want to use what is best for your specific skin type. For me, I have more oily skin. I have texture and I do have redness as well, but I usually, I usually try to focus on more um, fixing like, like the enlarged pores, like the texture as well as the oiliness because those can be, those will just make my foundation run away as quick as possible. So yeah, they have like pore filling, they have hydrating, they have mattifying, they have um, like color correcting, like for redness and whatnot. So they have so many different primers and they do have a lot at the drugstore right now that are very, very good. So if you do have more of like a dry skin, um, you will wanna go in with more of like a hydrating primer. And now since mine is more oily, I'm gonna be going in with more of like a matte foundation but I don't want it to look too flat or too matte in order for that to be the case. So I'm actually first gonna go in with this Catrice Light Correcting Serum Primer in the shade Candlelight. So this is pretty much going on, I'm gonna take my rings off. So this is going on to ensure that, like it kinda has like, ooh, it's kinda gross like I'm not gonna lie. But this is going on just to be sure that I have a little bit of life to my face rather than, um, like looking too flat. And usually I won't really apply that like to my nose. I will kind of places where um, like I don't get crazy oily. And honestly, I do like to let my primers sit for a while before I apply my foundation. So in those cases, like when I'm actually applying it for the day, I will normally go with my primers first on my face and then I will do my brows and then do my eyeshadow and then go in for my face. But for today's video, I am not going to be doing that. Um, for the pore filling and mattifying type 
situation that I need, I am going to be going in with the Catrice Prime and Fine Smoothing Refiner. And this is actually, um, I would say a close, so I'm, I'm not gonna say an exact dupe, but a close dupe for the Smashbox Pore Minimizing Primer. But it has like that kind of like moussey texture and it's just it's not as poor feeling but i mean it it does it does the trick i'm really putting that on the places where so i'm putting that kind of all right there that's where i get a lot of that's where i have a lot of like enlarged pores it's like all my cheeks and on my chin and that's really helped to like smooth everything out as well like i really enjoy this primer i think i got mine at ulta now with these, I don't exactly like rub them in. I actually kind of pat them in and on my nose. Like that is like my, I have so many pores, like in large pores on my nose. And if my face looks a lot lighter than my body, it's because it is. <laughs> What's new? I always like save these little um, plastic things that come in like makeup, um, that come in like palettes and stuff. And I use them as like little mini foundation palettes like to mix my foundations on because <laughs> what? Okay, so for foundation, I do have a few different options, and I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Lately, I have not been able to put down the Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation ever since I did my first impressions wear test for it. I've literally been wearing it every single day. I cannot step away from it. It is amazing. But I'm now quite self-tanned, and this does not match me at all. So we're not going to be able to use her today. <laughs> Sadly. But another of my favorites when it comes to full coverage, long wearing foundation is the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour full coverage foundation. Stuff is the bomb and it's really not too matte. So I feel like it's pretty good for most, if not all skin types. So that's why um, I feel like it's just a really good recommendation for everyone it has kind of like a satin matte finish if you will kind of like a natural matte rather than like super flat matte so i also like the catrice liquid coverage foundation but it's unfortunately not in my shade right now i need to get a darker shade for when i'm self tanned i'm gonna be mixing two shades of this today i'm gonna be mixing 128 warm nude and 220 natural beige to create the perfect shade I'm gonna pump like one pump of each. All right, I'm gonna be super sanitary. Take my finger and uh, and when it comes to applying foundation, you always want to start with kind of not too thick of a layer. You could always put more on, you know, but taking it off that's kind of like kind of not not easy to do. So I'm gonna take a beauty blender um, and any beauty sponge, whatever you want to use, will work. And we're going to go ahead and blend that in. And we're really pushing it into the skin. Like, look how much coverage. I think this stuff is just crazy. I'm gonna take a brush and kind of like brush it down on my neck, kind of, because I hate when I get that line. <laughs> So, like I said, like you want to go in with kind of like your first layer and then kind of address like what else, like if you need any more coverage anywhere. Now, you don't really want to apply too much onto the places that you're going to be applying concealer because then that is when it can begin to start looking very cakey and we don't want that. I'm going to take like a little bit more and put it into like the cheeks because that is where I can tend to um, get some more redness that I don't really apply much concealer as well as like my chin and you really don't want to put much like under your eyes as well because that can cause your concealer to look cakey we don't want that okay now i will say the reason i use this sponge right now is because since i do have quite a few blemishes i feel like when i use a brush it can really kind of cause those dry patches that are on like the healing blemishes to become more emphasized and i don't want that and if you do use a brush it can actually kind of act as a exfoliating type um, motion and it can actually cause your skin to become very red. My skin is very easily reddened I guess you would say like it's super sensitive so sometimes when I do use a brush I do find that it really does cause my skin to become more red so keep that in mind as well okay so after foundation it comes concealer um so for concealer you want to use something that is about one to two shades lighter than your foundation shade so you don't want to make it like too light but you don't want to make it the exact same shade 
either because this is in order to kind of highlight as well. So it acts as a concealer to give you more coverage on certain areas as well as highlight and kind of brighten areas too. For that, I'm going to go in, this is one of my favorite drugstore concealers right now. And it's so, so cheap. This is the um, LA Girl Pro Conceal. Um, and it's just seriously amazing. This is in the shade Creamy Beige. So I also have um, shade Porcelain in this as well, which is like super, super light. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go in with this one first and this has like a little brush tip. And you can tell it's very kind of like a peachy color and that does help to color correct um, the dark circles. You need like that blue, purple, dark circle type stuff we have going on. So we're applying this under the eyes. We do it on the center of the nose and a little bit there. There. And then I'm also going to take a little bit like right down here because I get like kind of like the creases and whatnot like right there like on my smile lines. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the um, porcelain shade. This is gonna be like crazy light, so don't be alarmed. Um, this is gonna help add a little bit more brightness like right there into the inner portion of my eyes. I just love this concealer. If y'all have not tried it yet, please, please try it. I really think you would enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, now for this, I'm gonna go in with my beauty sponge as well. And sometimes I will actually let it sit for a little bit and get a little more tacky. I can actually go ahead and start blending out um, my chin. Okay, here's a tip as well, forgot to mention. If you have like some blemishes that you're wanting to add a little more coverage to, what you can do is go in with a concealer shade that is like pretty much your foundation shade and you can use that to touch up those blemishes. So I'm gonna go in with this ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This is the shade Medium 26. And I can see right there, I'm gonna go over that. I feel like it's somewhat close to the color. Let me just go in and tap that out. And you don't really want to use like the same um, foundation sponge that you're using for uh, blending out your highlighting concealer because then you could actually emphasize and highlight those blemishes, which is something you don't want to do. All right, so now that we've allowed that concealer to kind of sit and get a little more tacky, we're going to go in and blend. And when we're doing that, we're really focusing on like pressing motions, really focusing on pressing it. And I'm like looking up. I'm sorry if I'm making like terrifying faces for you all. <laughs> that looks so much better. And you can actually go over your eyes as well. Um, Cause I usually do use a concealer to prep my eyes um, for eyeshadow anyway. Okay, and what I will do um, if I know that I'm gonna have a little bit of creasing, cause I normally have like a little bit. And if you don't have creasing, I'm very jealous. <laughs> so usually I'll take like a smaller like concealer brush, like something like this and tap it in where those creases normally are. Like press it in, if that makes sense. If you set your concealer when there are creases in it, those creases are going to set just like that. So yes, be sure before you set anything, you don't have any creases. And I just take like a little brush too and go around um, my brows as well. So if you take like your beauty blender like around your brows, I've, a lot of the times I've like screwed up my brows royally. <laughs> and if you do start to like get a few creases before you set, just go in, pounce them out. So now to set the under eyes, I'm going to go in with the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder in the Translucent shade. Just any beauty sponge. I'm going with a different one this time though. I'm going to look up. I have the ugliest face when it comes to like setting stuff under my eyes. After I set like under my eyes quite a bit, I to kind of like get it like right up there by my nose. Like you see what I mean? And that kind of... It's gonna help when we go into contour our nose as well. Like see how I did a little bit on the sides like that. I'm gonna go in a little bit like down here where I normally usually like my smile lines. So if you're wanting to bake, if you have oily skin, like and you really wanna bake whenever you want your foundation to last for a long, long time. Like all day long, you don't want it to move whatsoever. 
Um, normally, like if I'm just going to run errands, I'm not gonna bake. Like that's just something that I don't do. Um, a lot of people do, and that's totally fine too. But for me, I really only bake if I know I'm going to need this to last like for a long time. Like if I'm going to a special dinner, going out, you know, girl night, date night, whatever, something like that. But if you are going to bake, I would say if you have more oily skin, I would say let this powder sit and really set all those products for about five to 10 minutes and then sweep them away. But if you have more dry skin, I would say less time than that because baking can really tend to emphasize that dryness. And if you're dry skin, you probably don't want that. So, no, since I am just putting this on at like 10 o'clock at night, I'm not really gonna let this sit for all that time. If you did need it to stay, that is how long you would need it to sit on your skin. So now what I do, instead of just sweeping it away with a brush and calling it a day and that's it, no, I'm going to go in and sweep it away with a brush that has a product on it. So that product is going to be a pressed powder. Now I like to go in with a pressed powder, usually like a powder foundation, whatever, because I feel like on top of actually setting all of your foundation into place, I feel like it also adds a little bit more coverage. So when you're going for that full coverage look, I feel like that's a very, you know, a good thing to do. So for that, um, I either use like the Collab Kill the Shine Pressed Powder or the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. Today I'm going to go in with the Collab Kill the Shine Powder and this is in the shade Ivory Sand 023 and I'm going to go in with a big brush like that and I will kind of like press that in. So we're going to see it's going to add more coverage as well as setting all of the makeup and now when it comes under the eyes you can kind of like sweep it away ever so lightly we're really focusing on pressing that into the skin this is also a really good powder for touch-ups too so pretty much any pressed powder is good for touch-ups but i really like this one now that we have everything set into place we are going to go on to the contouring part of the video okay so when it comes to contouring for contouring like you know casting that shadow to make the face look a little slimmer you will want to use a more cool toned shade of bronzer for that or you can actually like do kind of a mixture of a little bit of cool and a warm tone or if you have something else you prefer that's totally fine too that's just kind of what I do is I use more of a cool toned to just carve out the cheekbones, snatch the nose, a little bit of that. So, so for that, I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Contouring Palette, and it's in the shade Dolce de Leche. It's like as big as my face. It's got a really pretty um, setting powder as well that can actually be used for under the eyes too. So this is kind of a two-in-one, like it's very, very good. I will say that I do like to do a cream contour as well, but for if you're like just starting out with contouring, I will say that a powder contour, like a powder bronzer, whatever, is going to be a lot easier to work with than a cream contour. I'm going to go in with the um, Sigma F40 Large Angled Contour Brush and I'm going to tap into that. And it does have quite a bit of fallout, just tap it out. And for that, I'm going to go in and... Now since I have more of a round face, I'm going to start more up here this will help to really kind of make it look as if um, my face is not as round and as round and thick as it is so we're gonna kind of put it like right there literally kind of like right on top of the cheekbones and we br I'm bringing it like all the way up there to the sides of my forehead like see how that casts like that shadow and it makes your face just look really just snatches it for you now, if you have like more of an, an elongated face, um, you will kind of like bring it down a little bit more, I would say. Uh, but for me, since mine's like more rounded and I'm going to make it look thinner, I'm kind of starting it up higher. And I'm also not bringing it down as much. Oh, get out of here. Oh, I love this stuff. It seriously blends so well. And I'll kind of like blend it up a little bit like that. Also bring it kind of like up here into the hairline like on the sides. You should bring a little bit up there too on the top of the forehead. You should take some up here to carve out, make it look as if I have a thinner gel. 
I'm usually bring it kind of all the way up there, like to the ear. I'm gonna go in with um, the Luxie Medium Angled Shading Brush, the Luxie 207. I'm gonna go in and use that same contour shade to snatch the nose. So in order to do that, you just kind of shade it down the sides. See, like it kind of casts a shadow and makes it look thinner. Just with any kind of like fluffy brush, I'm gonna take it and kind of blend it out a little bit, kind of diffuse it. And there is that. Looking good, girl. I usually take a little bit also and put it like under my bottom lip to make it look a little more pouty and thick. And then to kind of go over that bronzer, I'm gonna take this Elf Flawless Face Brush. Flash brush. Elf Flawless Face Brush in the um, Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. I'm going to tap into that and like do in a brushing upward motion. And that will help to kind of blend it in more seamlessly with your um, concealer so there's not like a super harsh carve out, if that makes sense. Like there's not a super harsh line between your contour and your concealer. And you can also like bronze up more, you know, up there and wherever else you want to bronze up. Okay, so after bronzer, it's going to come blush. So I have quite a few drugstore favorite blushes, um, but for now I am going to use, this is kind of what I reach for quite often, just, as, just what I reach for. Can't help it, okay? But it's the Milani Baked Blush in Lumino, so well, I'm gonna go with my Real Techniques um, blush brush. This brush is so good and it is so soft. And I'm gonna go in there. And this is like kind of a peachy, corally shade with a bit of a sheen to it. It is just beautiful. So I'm gonna go in there, tap off. It's so pigmented, so just be careful. And for my face type, I like to start it more up here, like towards like the top of the cheekbone, kind of and then bring it down more towards like the apple of the cheeks. Cause I feel like if I put it down here towards the apple of the cheeks, it makes my face look a little more round and I don't want that. I want it to look more elongated and slim. So that's why I will start the blush like more up here and then bring it down towards the apple of the cheeks with like less product on the brush. Oh, it's so pretty. I just can't get enough blush. Now, if you don't like blush, I mean, don't do blush. Yeah. Mm. That blush just gives like the prettiest sheen to the skin and it's just like, I always like to put a little bit on my nose too. Major key right here. So let me give you a major key. Okay. Listen up before you go in with highlight, spray your face with some setting spray, 100%. Just do it, you will thank me later. But really like it, it will change your life, okay? Normally I'll go in with my Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water, but since we're using all drugstore. I'm gonna go in with the Milani Make It Last setting spray. It's kind of like a part one to the setting of the face to where it will kind of melt all of the powders together. And it will also help your highlight be more blinding and it will just help to just put a little more oomph into the highlight, if you know what I mean. Okay, so since I'm highlighting with skin that is a little bit, like I have some texture and you know, acne, um, blemishes, all that, bad stuff that I don't want to emphasize even more and what highlight will do is emphasize those areas so like one of the best type of highlighters I ever tried is the ColourPop Super Shock highlights oh my gosh these are amazing they feel kind of like a cream formula like they're so soft I just love them they are blinding I like applied with a brush or your finger like just they are out of this world you guys if you've not tried them i highly recommend them i'm going to actually use the shade wisp in the ColourPop super shock cheek highlight and i'll go in like with kind of like two fingers and kind of tap in there it's like kind of like a goldy oh it's so pretty and i'm going to actually like lightly tap and i bring that like all the way like all the way pretty much like above my brow all the way around to the side oh and like it doesn't give that like white cast or like gray cast or anything like when you're looking straight forward you know oh, i just love it and you can actually take it a little bit like in there Ooh, 
and it will actually act as like your brow bone highlight. Go on to Cupid's bow. And so for highlight on the nose, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this as well. Like I have kind of a blemish right there, so I don't really want to accentuate that. So mm. glowy. Okay, and since today is just simply about the base, I'm going to go in and finish my eye makeup and then I will do the final step of setting the face to make it just stay in place all night long or however long you need it to stay. <laughs> and so I will go finish my makeup and I'll be back here shortly. One eternity later. Okay guys, so I am back with the rest of my makeup on. I just threw on some eyeshadow, mascara, eyeliner, and some lips, and here we are. Also added some of uh, the ColourPop Super Shock Highlight in the shade Flexitarian for the inner corner as well as the brow bone highlight, so there's that. Now, for our last step, the thing that we need to do is set everything in place because you know that we did go ahead and set all the powder products before we added the highlight. So now we're gonna actually set the rest of the makeup. Um, so for that, this is my holy grail. I, I just can't get enough. I actually went and purchased another one just in, for whenever I run out of this because I don't wanna run out. Like I, I don't wanna run out ever. The application of this, like the applicator, it's like an aerosol spray. It smells so good the way it melts all of your makeup together and it really does make it last. I am just hooked. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and set and normally I do set it before I do my um, mascara and lips, but here we are. We're going to go ahead and just do it on top of all that. Okay. It's like so refreshing the way this stuff melts all of your makeup together. I just, I can't get over it. <laughs> Like I'm, I want to bathe in it if that's possible. Yeah. So that is it. This is the look. This is the um, finished final product, final result. I don't know. I'm tired. What time is it now? Yeah. This is the finished look and the finished. This is. This is everything. Um, I really hope that this video was helpful for you all. I hope that it added some new info to your life and helped um, maybe to answer some questions that you may have about, you know, how to apply certain things, what are the best type of products for doing this and that and what have you. Um, if you all have any more questions whatsoever, please leave them down below in the comments. I would be more than happy to help. I'm not a makeup artist, I'm not licensed, I'm not anything like that, but I feel like I do have quite a bit of information that can be pretty helpful if you need it. So I'm always here to answer questions and help any way I can. So, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was super helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I would truly appreciate it. I hope you all are having a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye! Speaking my